This is Brian Mazik, the feature columnist for BleacherReport.com, a.k.a. Franchise Play, a.k.a. The Big Numbers Guy. This is the NBA 2K14 Draft Class 4th Update, and we're starting it off with Gary Harris, Michigan State Spartans shooting guard. More like a combo guard. He can probably play a little bit of point, at least in college. He can. I don't know if he's going to be able to do that in the NBA, which is why I didn't put that there for him as a secondary position. But Gary Harris, he's a good all-around player, but he's really, I would say, primarily a scorer. So we're going to take a look at some of the ratings or whatever for him in a minute. This is, uh, like I said, the fourth update. So once we're done looking at this update, you'll see it's actually 12 uh, players done. And I'm probably, well, not probably, I'm going to be cranking this up a bit because, uh, well, you guys will see coming up in the next couple of weeks, you'll see. Here's the attributes. And a little bit of a just a explanation of how this got here. Now, uh, as a matter of fact, Gary, Gary Harris, is, his three-point shooting is down a bit. So if you might have saw the three-point shooting numbers and was wondering why they were down, but he's only shooting 34% from three-point range this year. So that's a lot of it is probably, you know, he's taking more shots. He is averaging 18 points a game, but he's shooting 43% from the field. 34% from three-point range. So I got to kind of reflect that. The active hands, yeah, he's averaging two steals a game. Tom is those guards play defense. He's also a good rebounder for, you know, at a guard position, four and a half rebounds a game. So I like Gary Harris. I like his game. Six foot, strong, 220-pound uh, build. Um, I've heard some people say they kind of reminds them of O.J. Mayo. I can kind of see that a little bit. Um, a little bit. Uh, I, I, I would. I don't think that's a crazy uh, comparison. But yeah. I, now, look for Gary Harris to possibly really make a really strong move up draft boards come draft come uh, tournament time because Izzo's teams generally do very well in the tournament. Um, and Gary Harris is liable to be. One of the guys really, really shining for uh, Tom Izzo's team come tournament time. Also, Adrian Payne, of course, but we haven't got to Adrian Payne. He should be coming up shortly in the draft class, so you guys don't worry about that. A lot of people are asking, you know, are you going to do this guy? Are you going to do that guy? For the most part, like I said before, if the guy is remotely considered Somebody that's you know has a the potential to be drafted for the most part. I am gonna do it. Do um, I am gonna recreate recreate them or create them? I should say. So just sit tight. I'm kind of going from the top of the draft board all the way down. So we're almost like just at the end of the lottery right about now. So next up, Rodney Hood of Duke. Really, I like Rodney Hood's game a lot. I think he does settle for the three a little bit too much. Because I think he's smooth enough to get to the basket a little bit more than he he actually takes advantage of. But nonetheless, I like his game a lot. I really like the fact that, well, this is kind of like a, a like-dislike. And sometimes it looks like he, he will take over a game if need be. Because I saw uh, if you one of the cases when uh, Duke played Notre Dame. Jabari Parker was ineffective, foul trouble, with too much size, right? And we know Jabari's playing out of position. Well, for a stretch, especially like in the first half, Rodney Hood really took over the offense. He took over. And um, he was playing, I thought, playing excellent. I think he, I want to say he had, he had close to 30 points in that game. I mean, he played great. But towards the end of the second half, he just started to fade away. Even had a really crucial, crucial turnover. Uh, late in the game that I, uh, that partially cost Duke the game. So, you know, it's up and down. But he's averaging 16.9 a game, shooting 45% from three-point range. So if you saw the three-point shooting, you want to know why it was high, that's why. 83% from the field, 50%, I mean, 83% from the free throw line, 50% from the field. Um, not a stout defender, really, but he does have the uh, physical uh, traits to be a good defender, long arms pretty decent athlete i like him i like him a lot um if i could compare him to somebody right now he's has the potential the potential to be a slightly better ball handling or better ball handling sean elliott 
I, I, I kind of see that a little bit in him. But uh, he puts the ball on the floor a, bit, a little better better than Elliott because he can kind of create his own shot. Uh, Sean was more a catch-and-shoot kind of a guy. But either way, I mean, if you Sean Elliott, you're going to have a nice career. You're going to you know, be, for the most part, be a winner. So we'll see what happens with Ronnie Hood. But I do like his game for sure, especially as a shooter. The left-hand stroke you see here is... Uh, I made sure that he had that. It looks a little kind of like hitchy a bit, but the left hand jump shots kind of do kind of look like that on 2K. So that is what it is. But I think this is a pretty good, about as good of a physical recreation as you can do, uh, considering you kind of have to take the molds of the faces. I don't know. I think it came out pretty decent. Like I said, my most important thing, or the thing that I'm shooting for more than anything, is to make sure that they play like they should play, or at least how we think they should play, because nobody knows how these guys are going to play on the next level for sure. We have a good idea based off what we've seen, but that's about it. Moving on to the third and the final guy in this particular update, Zach Levine, uh, UCLA. This dude has sick hops. Okay, sick. I mean, like, he got all-star weekend hops already. Now, it, it, the ratings here for him is weird because you might, guys might have saw the overall. It was a 60, yes. But then you also probably saw the signature skills. If you didn't see him yet, you're going to see him. It's odd because he has a lot of, like, kind of holes in his game. He's young. He's raw. But he is averaging 11 points a game in 25 minutes. Shooting almost 50% from the field, shooting almost 43% from three-point range. But his free throw shooting is not good, especially for a guard, 66%. And, um, you know, so it's some stuff that you worry about. And I had to kind of take him down a bit with the, you know, because of turnovers. Because he's averaging 1.3 turnovers a game. But if you consider he's not playing that many minutes, that's still fairly high. And the poor free throw shooting, it really... To be honest, his three-point shooting is, is is very good. And, of course, he's dangerous around the basket. But that in-between game, like a lot of young players, it's not uh, it's not there. It's not there yet. You know, it, it could certainly get there because he has all the skills in the world. You look at his potential rating that I gave. It's probably, I, I, it may be the highest potential rating that, that I've given out. But look at him lately. He is struggling mightily lately since UCLA has really gotten firmly in the Pac-10. Last game uh, against Oregon State, he had six points. Against Oregon, the game before him that he had two. Against Cal, he had three. Um, Stanford, he did have 10. And then against Utah, he had 15. But he was really putting up big-time numbers early in the season before UCLA got in the tournament play. But... Ever since then, it's been really, really down, and he's not shooting. I mean, if you look at his shooting percentage or look at his shooting over, you know, the last three games. Well, the last three games, he's made three of 17 from the field. So that's not good. <laughs> and that's and one of eight, one of his last eight from three-point range. So you have to watch, especially freshmen. You got to watch the freshmen uh, who really blow it up early in the season before the team starts to play the conference schedule. And it's, it happens also to Julius Randle. Ever since Kentucky has hit SEC, hit SEC play, Randle has not been nearly as dominant. Partially is because, you know, teams start to get the tape and they get the, um, you know, get scouting reports of what does this guy not like to do? Where does he not like the ball? Where does he want the ball? They get all of that. And then they start to react and change. But then also, the other thing that you got to look at is that um, you're playing against, you know, some of those programs you're playing with, early, playing against earlier. These are guys who athletically can't match up. But now you're in Pac-12 play. The Oregon's and Oregon States and Cal's and Stanford's and Utah's and those teams can match up. Arizona for sure. He had nine points against Arizona. Not a horrible game, but. Definitely not anything that's going to jump out to you and say, hey, this, you know, this kid is ready for a, um, you know, ready to be a lottery pick, even though it does look like that's exactly what's going to happen. And it's based purely off potential. 
you know, and it's hard to blame because uh, some of the same things people are saying about him that he doesn't have was said about Russell Westbrook, too, who also went to UCLA. So and he has similar athleticism. But dare I say, he's even a more explosive jumper than Russell Westbrook. So he, he's an interesting case. And you saw all the signature skills. So he's still going to be he's still going to be able to really ball for you if you, you know, draft him in your NBA 2K14 draft class. So. That's it for this particular update. Y'all stay tuned for uh, for update five. Subscribe. Peace.